we're talking about the reality of the flood. The reality of the flood. This is Bible uh, reading number 98. We've almost done 100 now. We've done over half of the Bible, way over half of the Bible read, over half of it. And now we're coming down to chapter 9. Chapter 9. The flood has happened. Some horrible things happened during this, during this situation here that we're going to read in chapter 9. There's a lot of prophecy here in chapter 9 about what's going to happen. Human government is going to be established now. Human government will be established. The basis of human government and the human government is that one thing, that you've got to protect the innocent from the perpetrators. If somebody, later on we have the law of Moses, which really takes it down, you if you steal, you pay back so many times, so, so many fold. If you knock a guy's eye out, then your eye gets knocked out. If you if you uh, chop his hand off, then you lose your hand. Or if you lame him, you will be lamed. And that is really a great deterrent to crime. Do you know that? What if they took out and publicly executed all of these shooters that are happening today? They publicly execute them and shoot them. And you watch them die on camera. Not that it's something that we relish to do, but it is great deterrent to crime because God said it is. Not what I say, but what God did. It's a deterrent to crime and it's justice. They lay up in these prisons for 30 or 40 years or 50 or 60 years on death row. Nonsense. Nonsense. A person, before they're executed, it ought to be absolutely sure that they did it. There ought to be physical, visible evidence by two or three witnesses let everything be established. I don't think anyone should be executed. That, that is not the case. But when you got a guy go out and kill him 15 or 20 people, why does he even need to have a trial? The physical evidence is there. And that's set down here in the ninth chapter of the book of Genesis. Only ninth. The ninth chapter. The ninth chapter. Right in the beginning of the book of Genesis. And God blessed Noah and his sons and said to them, Be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth. And the fear of you and the terror of you shall be on every beast of the earth. What happened? Why is fear and terror on every beast of the earth? Now, if you have public hangings and public executions of source arts, uh, people would be afraid to do wrong, won't they? They're going to see what's going to happen to them. They're not going to get by with it. But now, animals have begun to see death. And now animals will be being eaten by mankind. And so now there will be fear in animals. Yesterday uh, we were driving down Fish Lake Valley and we saw this great big monstrous antelope in an alfalfa field. And Marilyn was trying to get her phone camera to work so she could take a picture of it. And that, that uh, antelope, even though I have seen that antelope many times, that antelope was afraid he had the fear of man in him. Mm -hmm. Natural fear of man. And finally he looked and looked and we were sitting there and looking at him and he said, maybe there's danger here. So he started loping off. Mm -hmm. And finally got off for way long distance. Then we went up there. I took her up there where an old dump was. I took Marilyn up there. And up there there were four more antelope. When they saw us, they started loping off in the distance. They were afraid. This is when that happened, right here. This is when fear was put into animals' lives. And the fear of you and the terror of you shall be on every beast of the earth and every bird of the sky. Before that, they were all pets, weren't they? They were all, com all companions. But now, things have changed. The sin 
just seems to multiply itself, doesn't it? In the summer of 2020, the Democratic Party kept condoling and condoning riots all over where they were burning police down. Well, this is mostly a peaceful protest, mostly. Mostly a peaceful protest. When people are dying, they're burning their business down, they're losing all of their whole wealth at somebody else's uh, insistence on being heard. And now we got it all over America again, and the Democrats are saying, sick them, sick them, sick them, sick them. When Roe versus Wade was, was, and this is murder now. When Roe versus Wade, the Supreme Court made a decision that abortion was okay. Medical science wasn't as we know it today. Now we have ultrasounds. We have all kinds of stuff. They watch babies sucking their thumbs that babies can hear. All of this. These are human beings in mother's wombs. And that becomes a human being when uh, they are fertilized, when the egg is fertilized. That is life right there. From that point on. That, from that point in time onward, human beings are eternal. They will spend eternity with God or away from God, but all animals, all babies, that is, I believe, die and go be with the Lord if they're aborted, if they die before the age of accountability. But they're human beings. Now, I was watching the news, ABC, NBC, CBS, CNN, propaganda. That's not news. That's propaganda. Propaganda, that's all it is inciting people to riot. I've watched them stand before the Supreme Court justices' houses taking abortion pills and the women were pregnant. They go behind the scenes and out pops this little dying baby. Then they hold the little baby up. They hold the towels up where the blood is. Yeah, we'll do it, we'll do it. It's not, it reminds me of Sodom and Gomorrah and before the flood. Wickedness abounding. And because they said that you're taking a life when you abort a child, they're wrong. This is not our moral. We will do with our body what we want. But I'm going to tell you something, women. When you've got a baby in your womb, that's not your body. That's an individual life that you brought into this world. And when you abort it, you murder it. As simple as that. We have death row, but here we have here, we're going to have crimes. If you shed blood, your blood shall be shed. That is capital punishment for capital crimes. And abortion is a capital crime. And yet, by the liberal media, it's human rights. What about the rights of the human? There is no such thing as a safe abortion. The baby always dies. Always dies. Always dies. No such thing as a safe abortion. Everything that creeps upon the ground and all the fish of the sea into your hand they are given. Into the, Their lives are given into the hand of mankind now. Every moving thing that is alive shall be food for you. Never was before. They didn't eat fish before. They didn't eat any fowl. They didn't have quail uh, parmesan or whatever, you know. Or They didn't have venison, <coughs> steaks. Now all of this begins. But animals have rights too. Really. God just tells you all about it. <laughs> right now, we're going to see it. Every movie thing that is alive shall be food for you and I will give it to you as I gave the green plants as vegetation. Only you shall not eat the flesh with its life, that is its blood. The blood is sacred of the animal. 
That is, a, that is an individual of life with a soul, a body, and a spirit. So you shall respect it as such. This animal has given its life for you. And that blood is sacred. That is living blood. When a, when a woman gets pregnant, the blood of the father goes into that child, not the mother. But what does a, and these abortion rights, what abortion rights does a man have for his child? Except just being a sire. What rights does a man have? We see such upside down justice in the world today. All of it is set down right here. Human justice. Human government. There was a, a girl that was raped by a man. And uh, he found out about it and decided to get custody of the child, and he did. The woman was not only raped, but now her child is taken from her. Is that justice? Why wasn't he prosecuted for rape? I saw something on the internet the other day. Why do women not report rapes? Because nobody listens. Nobody listens. I went through that with my daughter. I saw what happened to her in her life. Nobody listened. Nobody listened. Kamala Harris refused to prosecute when she was Attorney General in California. Along with all of the other rape from the Catholic Church at that time. She, they got big donations to her. So she swept all of the rapes and child molesting underneath the carpet. These are leaders that should be prosecuted, that should be executed? Leaders? Are they leading us in the way of God? Or are they leading us in the way of the fallen humanity? And surely I'll require your lifeblood from every beast. I will require it. You drink their blood, you will die. You have not respected that animal, you die. You drink their blood, you die. And from every man and from every man's brother, I will require it of the life of a man. Whoever sheds man's blood, by man's blood shall be shed. There have been a lot of abortions in the world. We're talking about blood. That's a bloody thing, abortion is. I know in many cases that they go into the mother's womb and cut the little child's head off, cut its arms off, its legs, dismember it. We are dismembering and we are killing and murdering babies like we absolutely are horrified in on the battlefield when they catch a, a soldier and behead him or cut his arms and legs off and crucify him. They do this, you know. Whoever sheds man's blood, by man's blood shall he be shed. For in the image of God, he made man and babies. They're made in the image of God. As for you, be fruitful and multiply. Populate the earth abundantly and multiply in it. Then God spoke to Noah and to his sons with, with him saying, Now behold, I myself shall establish a covenant, a sign of a covenant now with you and with your descendants after you and with every living creature that is with you God made a covenant with the animals and the birds of the field out here even those crows sitting on the on the high line wire over there across the room that's what it says here does it or not behold I myself do establish my covenant with you and your descendants after you and with every living creature that is with you, the birds and the cattle and every beast of the field with you and all that comes out of the ark and every beast of the earth. And I establish my covenant with you and all flesh shall never again be cut off by the water of the flood, neither shall there again be a flood to destroy all of the earth. 
what is this covenant? What is this sign of the covenant? God said, this is the sign of the covenant which I am making between me and you and every living creature that is with you or all successive generations. What is it? What is it? What is the sign of the covenant? Baptism is the sign of the new covenant. Circumcision was a sign of the Old Testament covenant. And now we have a sign of another covenant, the covenant that God will not destroy the earth by flood, all of the earth. I mean, there's many floods in the world but not a universal flood like it was. I will set my bow in the cloud, and it shall be for a sign of the covenant between me and the earth, and it shall come about when I bring a cloud over the earth that the bow shall be seen in that cloud. And when you see that, that's God's promise and God's covenant. That's a sign of this covenant. And I will remember my covenant which is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh, and never again shall water become a flood to destroy all flesh. When the bow is in the cloud, then I will look upon it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is, that is on the earth. And God said to Noah, This is the sign of the covenant which I have established between me and all flesh that is in the earth. We still see that today, don't we? I have seen a half a dozen rainbows in this valley at a time. The sign of the covenant. That's God's sign of that covenant. And the scientists will tell you, well, it's a light bending and doing and reflecting and all this kind of stuff. It's God's sign and God used science to do it. <laughs> now the sons of Noah came out of the ark were Shem, Ham, and Japheth. And Ham was the father of Canaan. Now we're going to have a wicked thing happen. Now these three sons of Noah, from all of these, the whole earth was populated. That's where we have Ham, Shem, and Japheth, that every human being upon the earth came from them. And Noah began farming and planted a vineyard. And he drank of the wine and became drunk and uncovered himself inside of his tent. Now he's in the tent with his wife. And he's drunk. Now something happens here that is a horrible event. Some of the rabbis tell us here that uh, a story that a lot of people don't believe it, but I, am, I think maybe this happened. And Ham, the father of Canaan, saw the naked of his father and told his two brothers outside. To see the nakedness of your father is if you saw his wife naked, you saw his nakedness because his wife is his. Okay? He saw the nakedness of his father. His father and mother were probably in there cohabiting. And he walks in there. And Ham, the father of Canaan, Canaan, saw the naked of his father and told his two brothers outside. Some of the rabbis say that Ham went in there and raped his mother. And she became pregnant. And some of the rabbis say that he even castrated his father. They never had any children after this, did they? Whatever happened in this tent, it was not good. But there's one product of this situation here, the Canaan, Canaan. Canaan means possession. Now, this is prophecy, and it happened here in this little tent in this time. A long time ago. These are the Palestinians today, the Canaanites today. These are the people that went into that land. But Shem and Japheth took a garment and laid it upon their shoulders and walked backward and covered the nakedness of their father, probably their mother and father. And their faces were turned away and they did not see the father's nakedness. Now Noah awoke from his wine and knew what his youngest son had done to him. How did he know that? He was drunk. But this is physical damage to him and his wife was physically attacked. Something happened. So he said, Curse be Canaan. 
curse be Canaan. This may be the first case of incest in the Bible, actual incest between a, a, a mother and son. A servant of servants. See, it, God is cursing Canaan. He's cursing the product of this criminal act. He shall be to his brother. And he also said, Blessed be the Lord, the God of Shem. Now, first of all, he curses Canaan. And he shall be a servant to his sons. It's talking about Canaan's descendants. It didn't say Ham's descendants. That Ham's descendants went on into Ethiopia and other places, and they were not cursed like Canaan was. The curse here, now the Southern Baptist and, and many people down through the ages, uh, they say this curses, uh, Ham's descendants were all cursed because they were black. You, you talk to a Mormon and say, oh yeah, that, uh, all people that are black are cursed and they're servants. But Joseph Smith said also that if they get converted, that within a few years that they will turn white and likes and, and wholesome. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, and Mormonism says that, that uh, Ham's wife was a son of, of Cain. Before the flood, no, she was not. None of those people were on this side of the flood. Check the genealogies. Not imagination. We're talking about biblical proofs here now. A servant of servant, he shall be to his brothers. Verse number 26 and 27 are very prophetic also. And he said, Blessed be the Lord, the God of Shem. Shem means name or monument. That's the ones that the Jews will come from. And let Canaan be his servant. Let Canaan be Shem's servant. Shem's servant. Shem's servant. Shem will go into the land of Canaan and will possess the land that Cain went, Cain's sons, or Canaan's sons went in there and built all those farms and everything. May God enlarge Japheth. Japheth means spreading. And let him dwell in the tents of Shem. It's talking about right now, when the Jews rejected the gospel of Jesus Christ, God turned to the Gentiles. And we live in a Gentile, the age of the Gentile, the church age today. There are a few saved Gentile, or, uh, uh, Jews today, but uh, a minority. Let him dwell in the tents of Shem. Let him take over Shem's administration. And let Canaan be his servant. And also, if you read, uh, and it's down here someplace, right here, Noah's three sons. You will find out all the contributions that the race of Ham gave to the world. Almost every, well, every invention that was ever, what we call, every invention that was ever invented, primarily, was done by the sons of, of uh, Ham. Printing, paper, medicine, all types of ingenious devices. Now, Japheth improved upon them. But Ham's descendants, Ham's descendants have been a blessing to all of mankind. Do they call them Hittites? Well, the Hittites, some of those were Chinese. Chinese. An old civilization Chinese. What did China give them to the world? A printing press, really? It wasn't Gutenberg. China did the first printing press. They gave uh, cast iron stoves. They gave pipe gas. Gunpowder. Flush toilets. <laughs> yeah, have, yeah. COVID nineteen now, yeah. But they, they they gave a lot. You see these the Aborigines down in South America, the the Indians down there, the the, the medicine that was developed from the plants they were using for medicine has is in seventy percent of all the pharmacies in the world. This is prophecy. 
Let him dwell in the tents of Shem and the Canaan be his servant. And Noah lived 350 years after the flood. So all the days of Noah were 950 years and we him both. He died, we him both, means and, we him both. He died and stayed that way. He might have lived 950 years, but when he was dead, he was dead. This is quite a story that we've, we've brought out of the Bible, haven't we? Isn't it? Beautiful. We're going to look at the, the racial table after this and look at that. But when man sheds another human's blood, he is responsible for that. He ought to die. That's the basis of the human government. The basis of the human government is to protect the good from the bad and the good people from the governments too. If a government is not doing this, it is a total failure in God's eyes. This must be established. Capital punishment must be established to protect people. And right is wrong. And right is not wrong and wrong is not right, as society will tell us today. They don't even know what a man and a woman is. But there's a real problem with that because now their women are all rioting because, you know, they're the only ones that can have abortions, you know. Even though they not, might not be sure that they're a woman. What foolishness, what wickedness, what twisted minds. What confusion. Our Father, we send this message out for your honor and glory. Please use it. Please use it to establish what you believe and what you've taught and what we should practice among the human race. Please forgive me where I fail you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.